Alright, so we got the same circuit <clears throat> and uh, now I'm doing analysis of what happens when we get a spark to happen and I noticed that we get um, a certain frequency of spark and uh, by this I'll mean uh, so now this is um, this here is the signal on the bottom of the primary and this is the signal going into the transistor. So uh, we're looking at, we got a probe here. That's the top signal and we got a probe here. So what I want to measure is um, when a spark happens, energy leaves the system, but we also get uh, energy going back down. So I'm thinking that maybe the spark is acting as kind of a reflector. And um, when we get a spark to happen, we get high amplitude, but that turns into a node and then we get high amplitude down here. Because uh, when I do, um, when we have the probe on the iron pipe, we see oscillations in the ground when the spark happens. So, but there's a, uh, here, I'll, I'll show you. So this is regular, right? And notice that our input signal is about, about 200 milliseconds. Let's make it 200 microseconds, I mean. Right, so there's our input signal. Now watch what happens. This is with the spark. So we can see that the uh, this frequency of spark turns into the same frequency as the pulse. Right. So here I'll, I'll try and freeze it. So there's a scope shot. Right, and it's about 200 microseconds. And now I thought that this frequency was maybe some natural frequency that was happening. Um, and the frequency is irrespective of the coil. I could use this coil or I could use this coil. And they have different resonant frequencies. So <clears throat> basically what happens now is if we change our pulse width so now the pulse that's going in is longer duration. So now it's about 400 microseconds. Now watch what happens with the spark. See that? So now it's every 400 microseconds. So essentially, we have some type of energy that's being reflected back from the spark, back into the circuit. We can see that on the primary. And I think since it's this high frequency, it's going right through the gate and it's somehow affecting the input signal to the transistor, which makes the transistor put in a signal. I mean, I'm not totally sure. That's why I'm making this video. So what do you guys think is happening? We're somehow getting a spark frequency that's the same frequency as the pulse width of my signal generator, but it basically takes out the off times of the signal generator and only when the pulse is on is when we don't have anything. So uh, I'll, I'll freeze this now, so it's 400 microseconds. Alright, so that's that's our scope. That's what happens when we get a spark. So we're getting some type of feedback into the circuit, which is causing, I guess, more oscillations at a frequency that's dependent on the pulse width of the signal I'm using. So uh, maybe a better way to do this would be to um, really try and separate this more from the driving uh, or from the primary and secondary because when we do get that like I said before we're getting a lot more of this energy going back into the circuit 
and then right here is the signal and you can see on the signal we do have radiant so this radiant field is essentially causing its own oscillations to happen within the circuit and thus we get weird anomalies so I would say that I need to figure out a way to separate my input from the primary and uh, if you guys have any ideas let me know thanks for watching